Hello, I'm Tim Shoebridge for Cherry Audio. I'm feeling very, very honoured and privileged to be able to give you a little walkthrough, a little demonstration of Cherry Audio's latest product. The cat is out of the bag. It is the Octave Cat. So the original CAT analog monosynth from Octave Electronics dates back to the mid-1970s, 1976 I think it was. So it's a serious vintage synthesizer by today's standards. Now Octave Electronics were a very small boutique company back in the mid-70s. Uh, they designed the CAT to be a portable performance monosynth. So its main competition would have been the Mini Moog Model D and the ARP Odyssey. Now I do say uh, monosynth, that's because the very first version of the CAT was a monosynth. There was a revised version one or two years later on and that was duophonic in nature. But let's take a look at the architecture in a little bit more detail. So in terms of oscillators, we've got two of them, as you can see here, two VCOs on the CAT. In terms of waveforms, for VCO number one, we've got a choice of three. We've got a sawtooth, a triangle, and a pulse wave. And for VCO number two, we've got a square wave and a sawtooth. Now, rather than having simple switches to switch between those waveforms, as you can see, we've got these sliders, which means that we can blend waveforms together for both oscillators. And it really does open up the sonic capabilities of this synthesizer. And as well as being able to blend in those different waveforms, each of the oscillators has got its own sub-oscillator. So you really can get some wonderful beefy basses and leads out of this synth. And it's one of the main reasons why musicians loved the sound of this synthesizer so much. Right, moving on to the filter. Not a lot to say about the filter. It is a 24 dB, four pole, low pass filter. Lovely sounding, can be really squelchy, can be really mellow, and it is not a blatant copy of the Moog uh, circuitry, unlike the ARP Odyssey was. Uh, and it's self-oscillating, so we can do things like this. So let's have a look at the modulation capabilities of the Octave Cat, and they are quite comprehensive, and I think this is the second main reason why musicians love the sound of this synthesizer so much. We've got, in terms of envelope generators, we've got two. We've got a full ADSR, and then we have a, a more simplified envelope generator. It's got full sustain, so you can only set the attack and the release portions of it. But the ADSR envelope generator is loopable, so it can act like an LFO. And talking of LFOs, we have one LFO. It does have an advanced feature you can you sort of delay the onset of the LFO um, it has two waveforms sine wave and square wave and you can use those independently uh, to modulate the pitch of VCOs number one number two uh, the filter cutoff as well so you could set the sine wave uh, to to modulate VCO number one you could use the square wave to modulate uh, VCO number two that kind of thing so it is quite flexible from that point of view uh, we can also choose which of those envelope generators we want to use to modulate the pitch of the both the VCOs 
and the filter cutoff as well, as well as the VCA. So we've got the choice of the two envelope generators for the VCA, or we can bypass the envelope generators altogether for drone kind of sounds. Um, what else have we got? We've got a sample and hold circuit. Uh, we have a noise uh, circuit as well, which I didn't mention. So the noise can be the source for the sample and hold, but we can also use VCO number one uh, or VCO number two to be the source of the sample and hold. And the sample and hold has got a glide feature built into it. Uh, what else have we got? I mean, there's quite a lot going on here. Sample and hold can be used to modulate the pitch of the uh, oscillators uh, or the cutoff of the filter um, rather than using the LFO if you want to. There's a lot going on here. Um, I didn't mention, but we've got cross mod between the two VCOs. Uh, we can uh, modulate VCO number one with number two and number two with number one. Um, and we can also use VCO number one to modulate the cutoff frequency of the filter as well. So you can get those kind of sort of dissonant sort of bell like tones out of the synthesizer. It really is quite flexible in terms of what you can do with it. And there's probably some stuff there that I haven't mentioned that I've forgotten about. So if all that modulation capability wasn't enough for you, what Cherry Audio have done, like they do with their other products, is they've really taken the heart and soul of that vintage synthesizer and brought it into the 21st century. Obviously, it is a software product. It uh, can run standalone. It can run as a plug-in in your door. Uh, it's got full MIDI capability. You can synchronize it to MIDI clock as well. Um, and as well as that, as well as being able to use um, the, the Octave Cat as a monosynth or as a duophonic synth, they've added polyphony, up to 16 voices of polyphony. As well as that, they've added unison mode with the ability to do unison detune. So you can get a, a wonderful array of sounds. Uh, I've really concentrated in this video and, and in terms of my tinkering around with the synth, I've, I've concentrated on using it as a monosynth and a duophonic synthesizer like the original. But in terms of polyphonic capabilities, it really is a very, very capable synthesizer. Here's just a very simple little example of that. to have polyphonic capability and a unison mode, what Cherry Audio have also done is add to the synthesizer MPE capability. As you can see by this little sign down the bottom here, we are currently in MPE mode, and they provided a whole load of MPE compliant uh, factory presets for you to play around with. And if that is still not enough for you, we've got a second sort of hidden panel of controls on the synthesizer, which we can switch to just by clicking there like that. And now what we've got is a whole load of master effects. We've got distortion, phaser, flanger, chorus, uh, a whole load of different delays, which are called echo here, sort of like harking back to vintage sort of terminology. And we've got a whole load of reverbs. They all sound absolutely wonderful, and they really do round off this instrument as a fantastic standalone Go to compositional tool and just wonderful synthesizer to play around with and make wonderful sounds with. I really do love the little touches that we've got here. Um, for example, on the delays, we've got a, a drive uh, circuit capability here, just purely on the delay taps themselves. So you can have the whole sound sort of like unaffected by, by distortion and drive, but add it to the delay. I really do like these kind of little touches that we've got going on here. It sounds really, really cool.
And last but not least, as you can see across the bottom there, we have a sequencer built into this synthesizer. It is so much fun, it really is. Maximum of eight steps, but it's two sequences, one above the other. You can use it to modulate the pitch of both the oscillators together, as you'd expect, or independently, so that they play different notes. You can get it to modulate the filter cutoff and the amplitude of the VCA. You can synchronize it to MIDI clock or have it free running. Uh, you can quantize each of the sequences or leave them unquantized. You can set the range of the notes as you'd expect. And you can actually gate the sequencer, control the start and the stop by the notes that you play, the MIDI notes that you send to it. And this really is a load of fun when you take it and you use it as a plugin inside your door because then what you have is a, a little mini sequencer inside a bigger sequencer and so you can get some really interesting predictable or also unpredictable results it's a load of fun it's a really brilliant idea to have a sequencer like this built into the synthesizer